Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to The Walk Podcast. My name is Sam. If you're new here, I post all things lifestyle, faith, travel, random vlogs, and I just kind of make this channel essentially a video diary of my life. So if you're new here, I'm so happy you're here. And if you are a returning viewer, then I appreciate you being here. Today, we are here with episode 14 of The Walk. Season two, if you will. I don't know. It's a new year. Uh, it's been about three weeks since I made a podcast episode. I took a break from this channel just to focus on my main channel, but also just holidays and just to kind of take it easy and kind of slow down a little bit. Um, so we're back. We're ready to go. I'm so excited. I have a list of things and topics that I want to share on the Walk podcast this year and the episodes coming up. So I'm really, really excited um, and I'm really glad you guys are here, like I said. So I hope all of you were able to celebrate the holidays in a fantastic way and bring in the new year in a fantastic way, however you wanted to celebrate it, whether that's on a big scale or a much smaller chill scale, whatever is your preference, I hope that you brought in the holidays that way. If you had to work, I feel for you. I have been there. I have done it as well. Um, and if you maybe had not such a good time, it's a hard season for you, just know that I'm thinking of you. I am proud of you for making it through and we're just taking it one day at a time, okay? Um, my holidays were actually very low key this time around. Um, and I feel like, I don't know if you guys like can agree or attest to this, but I feel like most of the people I spoke to this year, like coworkers and also just other friends and other family, everyone said that the holidays were like very low key and very just more chill and like relaxed and really just taking it as a time to be with loved ones and recharge before going back to work. And I think that that's so special honestly and I feel like that's rare nowadays I feel like especially with the presence of social media everyone just feels like they have to outdo the people around them you know and do everything on such a big scale in order to get people's attention but I and I, I don't necessarily think that there's too much wrong with that although that can get dangerous but I think it's beautiful that people still like kind of take it slow and just have it super super chill Christmas day I think I was in my pajamas at 8 p.m. <laughs> like really it was just so chill even my new year's like yes I went to a party but I was just I was just on my friend's couch you know like we were just talking and playing music and then watched the ball drop and I slept over we had a little sleepover and it was just very it was very nice I loved 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 the holidays this year so I feel recharged and I'm back better than ever. So before we get into the topic of today's podcast episode, which is the idea of vision. What is your vision for 2024? We'll get into that. But before we get into that, there are a few housekeeping things that I wanted to address really quickly. One, you may have seen on my community tab on this channel the other day, I asked you guys kind of how long you prefer these podcast episodes to be you know around 30 minutes 45 an hour you know the longer the better and honestly all of the results were so even that it really didn't help me too much but it kind of did in a way so 34 percent said around 30 minutes 32 percent said around 45 minutes and 34 percent said around an hour so 30 minutes and an hour tied evenly so, but I get it though, because, you know, the podcast episodes that I watch here on YouTube, I can understand, like, when you see a podcast episode or any YouTube video that's like an hour and a half long or something like that, it's kind of intimidating. It's a little daunting. I still will watch them sometimes, but maybe in like small doses, like I'll watch 20 minutes here and 20 minutes there until I finish the whole, until I finish the whole video. Um... Around 30, 45 is a good sweet spot, um, but the the results were kind of even. So I think I'm just going to let it depend. I think some episodes, depending on how much I have to say, you know, where the conversation leads us, maybe if we have guests, which I would love to do in 2024. Um, I don't know who yet, but it's definitely on my mind. Um, but yeah, I think if I have guests or just like more to say, 
then the videos will be longer. But if I'm just kind of getting straight to the point, then it maybe be 30, 30, 40 minutes. So we're just going to kind of, we're going to see. But either way, thank you if you participated in the poll, because honestly, any little bit of information helps. And I'm still, you know, I'm new to this podcast series thing. So I'm just still trying to, trying to figure it out. So that's the first thing. The last housekeeping thing that I wanted to address to you is I actually made a TikTok account for this podcast. And we're going to get into why I did that in a little bit later on in the video, because it's actually very relevant to some of the things that I am going to talk about. But I made a podcast um, TikTok page. It's called The Walk Podcast with two T's on the end. I'll put a little screenshot here so you can see, and I'll also leave the information down below. Um, but I did that because I feel like it's really, it's time to give this podcast some real exposure. I never really, on both my YouTube channels, I never really like promoted myself because when I started on YouTube at 18 years old, I was very private about it. And so I didn't post it on like my Instagram, my personal Instagrams and Facebooks and all the things. I didn't do that because I was, I was very afraid around that time. I was still kind of I don't know, as I get older, I'm seeing now that that time in my life, I was very, I kept things very like secret. Um, I was afraid to really come forward and like share who I was kind of, that's a whole other topic of discussion. Um, but I'm at a point now where I'm an adult, I know who I am. I've had nine amazing years here on YouTube and that's something I believe that I should be very proud of. And I, again, we're gonna, I'm getting ahead of myself. We're gonna talk more about this in a little bit. Um, but what I'm, and why I'm bringing this to you is because I would really love and appreciate, if you have TikTok, of course, I know not everybody does. If you have TikTok, I would love for you to go help a girl out and go follow the walk podcast on TikTok. I'm basically posting little snippets of certain episodes um, and just other little content things to kind of um, kind of find my way into that little podcast niche um, and like on Christian TikTok and, and young adult TikTok and lifestyle TikTok and all the things. I'm trying to find my niche and establish that page. I do have my own personal account um, that you guys are welcome to follow. And I, you know, I post on there pretty regularly and that's kind of just whatever I want, but I wanted something specifically dedicated to the podcast so that we could get it some exposure and really try to promote what we're doing here. Because I, I genuinely do think this is something very powerful that I want people to, to see. Um, so I would really appreciate it if you guys went and gave it a follow, maybe just repost some of the things. It would really, really help me out. And I would really, appreciate it so those are just the housekeeping things and see even like saying that to you like asking you to go follow makes me so uncomfortable like I've never really done it honestly on my whole nine years on YouTube I feel like people especially when my my first channel really got started it kind of just happened like the people just kind of the subscribers that came just kind of came on their own you know the algorithm I'm sure helped me out on YouTube um, which is great, but I think it's time that we, you know, we zhuzh it up a little bit. So again, yeah, if you guys could help a girl out, I would really, really appreciate it because we're all a family here, I think. That's how I feel anyway. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about vision. I thought this was, this was very appropriate because we're entering a new year. Well, we're already in the new year. We are two weeks into the new year, about. I'm filming this on the 13th, so yeah, about two weeks into the new year. And this topic was inspired by two different things. The first part of what I'm going to say, the first part of this episode is going to be inspired heavily by a guest speaker that came to my church the last Sunday of December. Um, you guys know I don't really share names just for privacy purposes and like location purposes. I don't, you know, just for safety reasons. Um, but we had a guest speaker come at the end of December and talk to us about vision um, and what that means and what it means to have your own vision and to look into the future and kind of create a vision for your life, the things that you want. They're like goals, essentially. Um, so we're going to talk about what that means, kind of how God sees it a little bit. Um, we're going to get into that. I only have like two scriptures I want to share with you guys today. And then we're going to talk about the second part, which this part was inspired by a TikTok trend. Surprise, surprise. Um, <laughs> at the end of December, early January, 
there was a trend going around that was like people were sharing their ins and outs of 2024. So the things that they were going to bring in, the things that they wanted to implement and the outs, things that they didn't want to do anymore. And so, of course, I, I created my own. I posted it on my personal TikTok. Again, you're welcome to look at that if you want to. Um, but they're essentially, I'm not really a big New Year's resolution girl, and we'll get into that. But I think the idea of ins and outs is really cool. Um, so I'm going to share. I'm not really going to focus on the outs because they're out, you know, in the past. We're throwing them away. But I wanted to focus on some of my ins and kind of like what my vision is for 2024. So without further ado, you guys know me. I'm, I'm a planner. I need to look at my notes or else I will... My thoughts are going to be bouncing off the walls and I'm not going to be making too much sense. So our guest speaker that came was basically talking about vision in the sense of every good thing starts with a vision. You know, when contractors, for example, are building a building, they're not just going to start building a building. They need to have a vision. They need to have a blueprint of what it's going to look like that, you know, you can think of many different examples for that. That was just the first one that came to my mind. But every good thing starts with a vision. And it's important to kind of note that vision and sight are not the same thing. So vision is not something that you can physically see in front of you. It's not something you can touch. It's not, it's not physically something you can see. It's not sight. It's not our natural sight. But vision is more of a vision. It's a mental thing. You kind of you kind of envision it in your mind and it gives you a goal of where of where you want to go. If you're doing a road trip, here's another analogy for you. If you're going on a road trip and you have no idea where you're going, you're just going to you're going to get lost. But if you have a destination and a map on how to get there, you're going to get to your destination. Does that make sense? You see what I'm saying? So a vision essentially is a way of talking about a desired future or a desired outcome. And again, that I can't take credit for that. That came from our guest speaker, but um that's essentially what he was talking about. And he was encouraging us. And that's why I want to encourage you to come up with a vision for your year and going even further your life. And so we're going to talk a little bit about how to do that. So um, I want to turn to Habakkuk, which I didn't even know was a book in the Bible until this. Um, but it is. It's a small book. And we're going to go to chapter two. Habakkuk, Hab, I can't even say it properly, Habakkuk, Habakkuk, chapter two, verse one. And it says, I will climb up on my watchtower and stand at my guard post. And this is the important thing here. It says, there I will wait to see what the Lord says. Which if you think about it, that doesn't really make sense. You're going to wait to see what the Lord says. You're not waiting to hear what he says. You're waiting to see what he says. Which if you think about it, that's the vision part. But if we want to break this down fully, if you look at the first part, he says, I will climb up on my watchtower. So Habakkuk is saying, I'm going to climb up on my watchtower. And by that, that can kind of be seen as getting away from the distractions. You're putting yourself above. You're separating yourself because distractions can actually mess with your vision, right? You're getting all these different opinions. You know, we love people love to share their opinions, especially nowadays in person, online. Everybody's got an opinion. Everybody's got an opinion. And if you're if your opinion differs from somebody else's, then you're wrong and, and what people will not hesitate to tell you you're wrong. Not everybody, but I I know you know what I'm talking about. It happens a lot. So everybody has an opinion about what you should do with your life, where you should go, even some of your own family members. And it's, it's not a bad thing to accept advice, but sometimes I think too many voices around you really distracts you. So separating yourself from that sometimes is really important. For example, I have a friend who, I'm not going to name names because I don't want to be sharing people's personal business, but to, to give a Cliff Notes version, I have a friend who was going through something and they were, they called me and they told me, you know, oh, and so-and-so said this, but then so-and-so said this about my situation. And then this person said this one. So now I don't know what to do. And I said, okay, stop. I said it lovingly, but I said, I'm going to be really honest with you. You're listening to too many people. 
you're listening to too many voices. And I know that when somebody tells me something, it stays in my head and it replays for days. So if you're getting constantly different voices at the same time about the same topic, all you're going to hear in your mind are their voices. And so when you have all those voices, it becomes really hard to hear your own voice. It becomes really hard to hear God's voice if you pray and if you, you know, if you're, if you're about that life, right? Um, it clouds your own judgment. It clouds your judgment. It clouds your wisdom. It clouds your discernment because you're too distracted. So sometimes separating yourself and going up on that watchtower, and again, that's like a symbol, right? Going up on that watchtower is going to be really good for you. Um, another distraction that the guest, the guest speaker talked about was a distraction can be fear and we all have fear, right? It's so hard to, to have a goal, a goal that you can't see, a goal that doesn't exist yet, a destination that doesn't exist yet. And you try to get to it. It's really scary. I go through it. I have things that I want in my life, in my mind that I want to come true in my life. And most of them are really scary (laughs) and are going to involve growth and are going to involve stepping out of my comfort zone. But if you allow that fear to live in your head rent free, that's going to distract you from your actual, your vision and, and your goals. So separating yourself from distraction is key. Now, he also talked about hearing from God to hear from God so trying to get the vision of because you have a vision but God also knows what's going to happen in your life too so it's important to get your vision to align with what God wants for you as well and that's all I feel like that's a whole other conversation that's something that I'm even still learning about to be 100% transparent but we could talk about that another time um but he was saying to hear from God you have to be close to him And to be honest, this is something that I am still trying to figure out in my mind. I've always wondered, like, especially growing up in church, people be like, oh, I heard from God. God spoke to me. And I would always be like, what does that mean? Like, do you hear a voice in your head or is it a feeling? Like, what, what do you mean you heard from God? Are you hearing a man's voice in your head speaking to you? Like, is it like that? Like, what is it? And to this day, like, I still, I still wonder that sometimes because I believe that I've heard God speak to me. Um, but it's never by hearing a voice. It's by like a feeling or like, like words will, like a certain phrase or like a sentence will repeat in my head that kind of thing it's like a nudging it's like a nudging inside me like it's it's the holy spirit essentially but it's it's a nudging and that's what i felt but i've always wondered like so is that hearing from god or is there more that i haven't experienced yet so i would love to know what your experiences with hearing from god are because i've heard it differently and i think it's also hard to think about you know or not even to think about it's hard to differentiate it, was that really God's voice? Is that him telling me what to do? Or are those my own thoughts? And I'm like misunderstanding. I think that's also another <laughs> topic of conversation. I'm touching on a lot of points here, but that's something that I've always wondered. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. But anyway, um, he was saying that it doesn't have to be a super loud voice. Like I was saying, like it could be a nudge. It could be like a whisper. Um, and he was saying that if you're close to, if you're close to God, to speak to you he doesn't have to shout like it's not going to be that big loud voice Um, and I was actually really happy to hear that because I feel like I have felt the still small voice but I'm saying voice but it's not really a voice it's a feeling maybe it's different for everybody but that's what I've experienced so hearing that I was like okay cool like it doesn't have to be a big loud booming voice okay cool maybe I'm not like totally totally missing out um but yeah, he was saying that if, if he's close to you, if you keep God close to you, if you talk to him every day, if you spend time in, your, in, in his word every day, if you're inviting him into your life every day, then he's not going to have to shout. He can just kind of nudge you a little bit. So I thought that that was really cool. The next thing after, you know, ha- coming up with your vision first and foremost, that's step one, right? Then separating yourself from distractions. Next write it down and this is a big thing that i've implemented in my life as well in the last year i write everything down prayer requests goals things that i'm believing for 
and there's a couple reasons to do it but let's first turn to, back to Habakkuk I think I'm saying that wrong but that's how I'm gonna say it we're gonna go to the next verse it's so it's chapter 2 verse 2 it said then the Lord said to me write my answer plainly on tablets so that a runner can carry the correct message to others so he's saying when you hear from God when you hear his voice or that feeling write it down and also write down your visions because writing it down holds you accountable i know i've i've prayed for things and i write it down and like the the like anal part of me wants to be able to check every single goal off like yes okay that happened that's done did that and if there's even one that's left like unchecked it's like ah oh, i didn't work hard enough Right. And it can even be like the smallest things like my to do list for that day. Like every time I write something down, I want to check all of it off. So writing it down holds you accountable. Writing it down is also cool because I love looking back at the things that I used to write and just kind of like being like, I remember when I wanted that and now I have it. Like it's really cool to kind of look back and it also reminds you like if they're prayers It'll remind you of God's goodness. It'll remind you of what he did for you, how he delivered when you asked him to, how you sought him and he heard you and he responded. It's like, a, it's like little mini testimonies, which is really cool. So God literally tells us to write these things down. And one day, like I've told friends this, things that are, friends that are like going through things, I'm like, write it down. Write down how you're feeling. And a year from now, you're going to look back and you're going to be like, whoa. I came a really long way. Episode 13, the last episode of the walk that we did when I went through my journal, and you can literally see how much I grew throughout the time that I kept that journal. And that's so cool to like look back at. And I also just look forward to keeping those things too, because when I'm an old woman, like I want to be able to look through that journal and be like, oh, like I'll like look back at it with like nostalgia probably. I'm like, oh, that was a rough time for me how silly was I back then? You know, like it's just something to look back at. That's also why I love YouTube. It's essentially like a video diary where one day, like I look back to old videos I made when I was 18 and I'm like, oh, look at me, little baby, you know? So it's really cool to just look back on these things. Um, the next part, and this is the last part of what I'm going to say before I get into the outs of the new year um, or the ins of the new year, not the outs, the outs are out the ends of the new year. Um, one of the things we talked about at church that day was that having a vision is great, but keep in mind, my mom's calling me, <laughs> keep in mind that there will be people in your life that do not agree with your vision or who will tell you that it's stupid. And those are the voices, like we said before, that can be like distractions. Those are the voices that you need to watch out for because you can allow people to ruin it for you because it's your vision. They're not going to see it the way you do. It can even be a family member. It could be a parent who maybe at first doesn't understand what you see, but you're like, yeah, but like me and God, like we talked about it. So like, I know I'm good. So don't let the other people ruin it for you. And there's a perfect example of this in Genesis. It's in Genesis 37, five. So let me get there really quick. Because this is a perfect example of some things that I'm sure some of you may have actually experienced before. Um, I feel like I have too. So this is talking about Joseph. And it says, One night Joseph had a dream, and when he told his brothers about it, they hated him more than ever. Listen to this dream, he said. We were out in the field tying up bundles of grain. Suddenly my bundle stood up, and your bundles all gathered around and bowed low before mine. His brothers responded, so you think you'll be our king, do you? Do you actually think you'll reign over us? And they hated him all the more because of his dreams and the way that he talked about them. So just keep in mind that not everyone is going to understand your vision and that's okay. No one is going to understand or maybe not everyone is going to understand your goals and that's okay because they are yours. And rem remember, like I think I've said this to you guys before, Whatever desires you have in your heart, God placed them there for a reason. So that means that you have more than enough power to get it. He will equip you with everything you need to fulfill that vision, to fulfill that goal. 
So don't settle for anything less. Don't ever let anybody tell you that you're not capable of getting to your destination, of fulfilling your goals. Because honestly, at the end of the day, it's not really their business. So my advice to you and my wish for you is that you will never settle for the watered down version of God's plan for you. And the more time you spend with him, the more your goals will align with his will for your life. So don't ever settle for the watered down version. Don't ever settle for the cheaper version, the faster version. I know we live in a, in a world where people want everything now. They want it now. They want it when they want it. And they want, if they can get it for a cheaper price, they're going to go that route too. Your vision is not for sale. Don't ever settle for less than what God has for you. And reach out to him, call out to him. The more, the closer you are with him, the more you'll understand and the more that it'll be revealed to you what that plan is for your life. So that's what I want for you. That's what I want for me. So I hope after you finish this episode, I hope that you will sit down and just write down some things in, in a place that you're going to be able to keep it, that you're not going to lose it, and write down some things that you want to see come to pass this year and just in your future in general. And I'm going to share with you a few examples of mine. I don't think this is everything, but I have six things that are my ins for 2024. Things that I want to implement, things that I want to invite into my life. The first thing is actually something that I heard from that like still small voice I was talking about before. And I truly think it was God speaking to me. I really do. I don't know how, I don't know why. Oh, I do know how, but I don't know why, but a couple of months ago, maybe like two months ago, I kept hearing these four words in my head. And it's hard to explain because it's not like I heard a voice, but I like, it's hard to explain if you haven't experienced it. It's like I see the words in my mind. I don't necessarily hear somebody saying them, but I see them. And the words were, let them see you. And at first I didn't really understand. And then I really started thinking about it. And that leads to what I was saying in the very beginning of this video about why I made the TikTok and why I want to start really just being open about what I do on YouTube because I really think that that's what that was referring to. Let them see you. My whole life, I feel like I've kept things hidden. I've, I've never really shown my true self to the world or even the people in my life, not always. Um, I kept a lot of things to myself. And I, and I think that there are reasons for that. Um, we won't go into that, you know, it's th things that I think my inner child has been healing and God has been healing me over time. Um, so it's not really relevant to talk about anymore. I had a great childhood, but every child goes through things and th those things affect you as you get older. So um, that's what I'm referring to when I say that. But I really think that it was about my social media platforms. Um, I have never posted my YouTube channel on my personal Instagram. People in my life know, all my closest friends know, my family knows, like it's not something I hide from the people in my life. Um, last weekend I had three of my new friends from church come over and I was debating, I was like, do I wanna leave my play, my play button up, my YouTube play button up? It's the one that I, the silver one that I got for 100,000 subscribers. I was like, do I wanna take it down or do I wanna leave it for them to see? And I left it. And the first girl that came, she, she came by herself, she beat everybody, and she looked up at my bookshelf and she said, you have a YouTube channel? And of course, instantly I panicked a little bit inside and then I was like, no, nope. let them see you. And I was like, yeah, I've been doing it for nine years. And she asked me questions. Um, she knew what ASMR was. I told her I had two channels. And then as we were talking about it, other people arrived, so the conversation kind of died. But it felt so good to just be open about it. Because you know what, YouTube is one of the best decisions I ever made for myself. It has set me up for so many things, so many opportunities. It has blessed me in more ways than one. And it's something that I'm really proud of. It's the first thing that I did kind of on my own where I started making money. I was working with brands when I didn't even know what I was doing at 18, 19 years old. And I did it. And I built something really great that is even beneficial to me now nine years later and it's still growing every day and it's just really cool so I want to be proud of it I want to let people see me I want all the the new friends that I'm making in my life I don't want to hide that from them 
because I want them to really see me for me. I want them to know who they're friends with. Going forward with, you know, with dating, it's something that I plan on not hiding anymore. Maybe not like first date type thing, but if it's someone that I really like and that I've I've been seeing, like, I'm not going to hide that because it's a big part of who I am and, you know, I want them to know who they're dating, right? Um, Some people may be uncomfortable with social media presence and if that's the case, then that's probably not going to work out, you know? I just really feel the Lord telling me, let them see you. And so I made that TikTok account as I was literally, as I was praying about that one morning, I think it was this past Monday morning, the idea of make a TikTok account came into my mind and I finished praying. I said, all right, Lord, let's do it. And before I even stood up, I made the TikTok account and I was like, okay, we're going to do this. And I told one of my best friends and my coworker, Marissa, about it. And she said, I think that's amazing. She said, I'm so proud of you. And she said, what are you going to do when people at work see it? Because it's probably going to pop up on their phones. And I said, it terrifies me, but you know what? I want them to see me. And she said, amazing. I'm proud of you. And I did it. So, you know, and I also think it's okay to promote myself. You know, I've never liked being that YouTuber that's like, please go watch and like and subscribe and share. And not that there's anything wrong with that. I think that's what I should be doing. I've just never felt comfortable with it. But I'm getting to that point where I'm like, I need to start being open about these things. So let them see me. That's my, that's my biggest one. That's the first one on my list of things that I want to implement in my life. Let them see me. Two, it's kind of a, it's more of a materialistic thing, but I really feel like just living more natural. And by that, I mean my natural hair color. I don't think I'll ever like go blonde again. And this is just a personal preference, but I just, I like my natural hair. I like having shorter, like not flashy nails. I look back to like two years ago and my nails were like long. They didn't even look good. They were like oddly shaped. They were like this weird oval egg shape. I don't know. Um, And they were just flashy. And I feel like I always tried to just get something flashier and flashier and flashier. And I think I was overcompensating for things in my life. I think that was also the blonde as well the blonde and then cutting 12 inches of my hair off I think that was overcompensating for things and as I get more comfortable in myself and my life I just feel less of a desire to change myself so drastically or like put on this I don't know like superficial feeling self because that's what it feels like I look back to like 2019 2020 and it I I just felt very like superficial and it was because I wasn't happy with who I was in here. So I was trying to overcompensate on the outside. So that's an in for me, just a little more natural. Again, like these are my nails. I just get powder on them so that they're, they're stronger, but they're my nails and they're shorter. And I don't know, I just feel more comfortable in my natural hair color. So that's just me living a little more natural um, is an in for sure. Three is something I actually started in 2023, but I want to keep it going. It's adopting the, if I don't like it, then I'm going to change it mentality. Um, I feel like in the past I used to, I've talked about this too, but like I used to wait for things like, oh, I'm going to wait until I'm engaged and then straighten my teeth. It's like, why do I need to wait for marriage or wait for a man to do that? Or like, Let me give you a little sneak peek here. I said I wasn't going to do this, but I feel like I'm going to do it anyway. I said, I'm going to wait to get a pet until I'm married. Why? Hint, hint, wink, wink, something coming soon. Um, Things like that. Like if if I want to do something in my life, I'm going to do it. I'm not going to wait. I'm not going to wait for the time is right. Like I'm just going to do it. Because honestly, for some things, there will never be a right time. And then you're going to keep saying that and you're never going to do it. And then it's going to make you sad. At least when I say you, I mean me. Because that's happened many times in my life. So I'm adopting that mentality. If I want to do something, if I want to change it, I'm going to do it. In that same kind of, uh, on that same wavelength. And a big in for me this year is I want to be in my hosting era. What I don't think I've ever told you guys is I have a video saved on my phone somewhere. I made it in September and 
it was a, a little video diary like of me talking to myself and I said okay Sam I know you're feeling a little lonely lately I know that you know you have this this desire for you know friends and community and and all these things and I said mark my words a year from now your life is going to look so different I said this apartment is going to be filled with with friends old and new you're going to host things you're going to have a great community around you and I said I can't wait to watch this video in a year and see how much your life has changed and that was only three four months ago and my life has already changed I've hosted a couple things here I've had my new friends over I've had some old friends over I've hosted things and I always see these cute like these parties that people host on TikTok with like themes and I was like oh I want to do that but like no one wants to do that or no one has these ideas hello why am I waiting for other people to do it if I have these ideas and I have an apartment I live by myself it's not like I have to ask people for permission if I have these ideas let me host the parties And so that is a big in for me in 2024. I want to be in my hosting era. I've actually found that I really like hosting people. I think I get that from my mom. While it's happening, it's a little stressful, but then you like look back to the memories and you're like, oh, I'm so glad I did that. So that is a big in for me, being in my in my hosting era. Um, Two more. This is a big one that I've never been really good with. I want to implement the fact that it's okay to not be so available to people all the time, 24-7. I have always been the type where, like I always said, I never understand how people just forget to answer a text message. But I know that there are people who actually do forget to respond to text messages. I have just never been that type of person because when I see a text, I have to, I have to answer it. And I have to remind myself that it's okay not to answer right away. Even if somebody like needs, now if it's a dire emergency, then yes, respond right away. But you know what, if you, when you feel your energy being drained, it's okay to put your phone on do not disturb. It's okay to wait an hour so that you can recharge and then text them back. It's okay to take a break. You know, I have to also, I have to take care of the people in my life, but I also have to take care of myself. And so I am learning that it is okay to not be readily available all the time, you know, or even like, for example, when I'm not at work, I mute my work note, my work emails now on my phone because they come to my personal phone. I mute them. If I've had a long day, even if people are texting me, as soon as I leave work and I come home, mind you, it's already like 11, 11, 15 at night. When I get home, I put my phone on do not disturb. I'll, I'll respond to you in the morning. And for a while, I for years, I thought that that was rude and I hated when people did it to me, but now I understand. And I think that that's okay. And so that's, it's still something I'm not super comfortable with, but I'm getting there. So, and then last but not least, a big, well, this is actually an out now that I think about it. So I guess we're talking about one out. A big out is entertaining what's not for me. And with that, if I'm being honest, that's mostly, that mostly has to do with men. Um, In in just the last year, there have been a lot of guys that have come into my life. Some that I've, I've talked to, some I've gone on dates with, some were, were super short lived. And I always, I always, I ask God always to reveal to me hey, can you reveal this guy's character to me before I, before I waste too much time on him? Just so if, if, if he's not for me, that I would know and that I would just kind of move on. And that happens every time. It happens every time. Um, does not mean that they're bad people at all. I actually like all of them as people, just not for me romantically. Um, but for a while, I would know that the that that wasn't the person for me and yet I would still entertain it because oh but it's somebody to talk to it's somebody to tell me I'm pretty it's someone to take me out on dates but why I'm wasting his time and I'm wasting my time I would rather be single and kind of just rock in on my own with my friends and my family living my best life than entertaining something that's not for me because the longer you entertain it the worse it's going to be when it ends You're either going to walk away first or they're going to walk away first. Either way, someone's getting their feelings hurt. So if we're just kind of 
as soon as you figure out, oh, that's not for me. Okay, let me let me just kind of shut that down right now. Let me kind of walk away from it now before it gets too serious. It's helping your future feelings and their future feelings, in my opinion. So that is a big out for me. And I feel like within the last month, I've gotten better at it. And I made it, you'll see when you look at the TikTok, the walk podcast TikTok page, you'll see I made a TikTok about it and it says, I'm actually going to read it to you because I was pretty, I was pretty proud of that one. And it actually got a good amount of views, kind of, sort of. I said, everything changes when you realize that what is for you will never miss you. You didn't get that job. There's a better one on the way. That guy dumped you. There's somebody better for you. Get excited because this is your story unfolding. So every time it doesn't work out with something, I'm like, okay, that just wasn't for me. And I move on. And it really just changes your mentality, like totally. So those are five of my ins and one of my outs for 2024. So I hope that this video was entertaining, but also helpful and useful. I really recommend anything that you want to happen this year or just in life in general, anywhere you want to go, anything you want to do, anything you want to accomplish, write it down. That's like the biggest thing I want you to take away. Write it down and you'll be able to look back on it and be like, wow, like God really pulled me through or I really did that, you know, depends on the situation. Um, and I wish nothing but the best for you in 2024, 2025 and onward. We are in this together. We are on this walk together. <laughs> See what I did there? Um, and we're going to be okay. We're going to be more than okay. It's going to be great. So thank you guys for being here. I hope that you enjoyed and I will see you next time for episode 15. Bye guys.